Live action there on Sportsmax 2 from the corporate area track and field championship at the Ashenheim Stadium at Jamaica College. Live coverage there with uh, Ricardo Chambers. And we're going to start off the zone today with some track and field because the Grenadian decathlete Lyndon Victor won his first global medal at last year's world championship in Budapest, Hungary. He caught the bronze medal, totaling 8,756 points, a national record that in the 10 event competition. The Grenadian needed a championship best 54.97 meters in the discus throw to secure the bronze medal. He will now look to take his success to the Olympic Games later this year. Lyndon Victor now joins us to discuss his Olympic preparations and plans for the season. We'll talk to him in just a moment. Um, but when we look at his career, uh, Leighton, um, we have to be very proud of this Grenadian and how hard he has battled in the past six or seven years yeah. to get where he is at at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, the Catalan is one of the toughest events. You, yeah. It actually is called the toughest event in track and field. <laughs> and he's excelled at it. Twice Commonwealth champion. He's you know, won medals at the Pan American Games. And of course, his first global medal last year, which took some doing because it took a lifetime best for, for him just to get onto the podium. That's how yeah. tough it is. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's, been a, it's been a good journey for him. And I hope that going into the Olympics in Paris this summer, that he'd be able to at least replicate that performance and end up on the podium again. Yeah. All right, Lyndon is joining us now via Zoom to talk about his plans for this year. But uh, can I start by asking you about uh, the officer of the Order of uh, British Empire uh, that you've been um, named to, Victor, um, in the 2024 New Year's Honours list? That, that's, that's a great honour, isn't it? How, how, how did that grab you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was unexpected. Um, I just got an email and they, they said that I was awarded that. And I actually had to um, look it up to understand exactly <laughs> what it meant. <laughs> and then I was like, wow. <laughs> I, it, it, it's definitely an honor anytime your, your sporting abilities is recognized in any way. Yes. And for me, you know, just whatever, whatever recognition I get for my athletic ability is humbling, but to, yeah. to be an OBE is, 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 is up there in my accomplishments, I, I will say that. Well, you, you, you have to say that because uh, you have joined a, a, a big list of, an, an elite list of um, global performers who are OBEs uh, um, accorded yeah. so by, by Britain's royalty. Um, let me start here, though, from a, from a Lyndon Victor perspective and uh, get from you <laughs> the kind of season you had last year and how it sets you up for the Paris Olympic Games because the cycle for the Olympics are a little different because the 2020 Olympics, because of the pandemic, was actually staged in 2021. So the cycle now is a three-year cycle and not the regular four years. How well prepared are you, do you think, Lyndon, for the Paris assignment? Well, um, I'm getting there. Uh, after... after after Tokyo, I um I was re I finished seventh and um I pretty much cleaned house. I got a new coach, a new agent, a new medical staff, um, and you know so far it's been going good. I've been I've been there two years now, and um I've been I'm being coached by um, America's Chris Huffins, who won who won the bronze medal in the Olympics, you know, and the, so far it's been going good. I've I, I'm not going to say it hasn't been challenging because it's been really challenging, especially last year, where I only had four, basically four months to train because I was hurt all year. And the, the last four months, we just we just put in a lot of training. So I'm just trying to build off of what the last two years has been and see how I can, how I can get better each, each and every year. Yeah, Lyndon, can you talk to us about your decision to clean house, as you put it? Was <laughs> it a case of uh, you being dissatisfied with um, your, your, your training setup and so on. Talk to us about your decision to, as you put it, clean house. No, I, I would like, I just feel like I had more in the tank and um, I just wanted the right help and uh, God put the right people in my life at the right time. Um, 
that will help me that that's been helping me to to get to that point. I, I feel like everything that I've been through in my life prior to that is it, just like a stepping stone to get me to the right people. And so far it it's been it's been good. Um you know, I just felt like I had more in me that I wanted to get out of. And um, I had some disappointments in in the past in major competitions. So I, I just feel like I needed a new start. Lyndon, you mentioned, of course, a new medical team, a new medical staff, which is crucial because you pulled out of the Pan Am Games last year with what has been described as some chronic issues in terms of your adductor and, of course, the sore muscles um, that required rest and therapy for a minimum of six weeks, I think they said it was. Where are you now in terms of those injuries as you prepare for, you know, the, the ultimate, the Olympic Games? Well, that, that, that's, that's an injury that's been plaguing me all throughout last year. And um, like I said, for the first six months of the season, I was hurt. And then we got, we got four months of training in and we, we really dialed in in, in, that, in that four months. But it's still there. It's still it's still lingering. But I think I think the the my my team, we're, we're dealing with it a little better than we did last year because we we know what it is. Last year we were, we we went to every doctor trying to figure out what it was. And we thought it was a sports hernia. We thought it was a torn muscle. We like we just didn't know until we went to another person and they told us it was something called osteitis pubis, which is just inflammation in the pelvic bone so um i don't think it's going to go away anytime soon i thought we thought we had to do surgery and stuff but luckily there's no surgery involved it's just just a matter of treating it and being cautious with some of the events like the hurdles and the, and the pole wall and the 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 events that requires a lot of takeoff and aggressiveness in the in the in the pubic area so, so does that impact the way in which you prepare and, and how intense I mean, give me a sense of how you manage training now, because your training is different from everybody else's. It's, it's more intense. It's 10 events. And, of course, they yeah. mentioned the hurdles and other things um, that require you to put extra stress on those particular areas of your body. Um, how do you balance that now in terms of managing the injury and, of course, being at the optimal level in terms of your training? Well, um, you know... Just, it's just a testament to the, to my team around me. You know, we we we. It one, it takes a lot more treatment. Um, I think we, they, my coaches have learned to protect me from myself because I always want to do more and more and more and more. And as I've gotten older, I've learned to trust trust a little bit more because um, I always feel like I'm not doing enough or I should do more. And you know, so we 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 kind of figured out a system where there are days when I still can't even walk because it hurts so much. And then that we just back off for a couple of days and it, it's back to, to where it has to be. Well, I'm wishing you all the best with that. I have one more question before I throw you back to Lance. But yeah, of course. <laughs> give, uh, give me a sense of, you know, your, you, it took a, 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 big, a big personal best for the discourse for you to qualify, well, to get onto the podium last year. You know, where are your... Not, not I want you to expose it to the world, but certainly where are the weaknesses that you think that you need to strengthen to enhance your chances of ending up on the podium in Paris? Well, I mean, the obvious events, like pole vault, we don't pole vault in Grenada. Yep. <laughs> I, 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 had, <laughs> I had to learn pole vault when I came to America. Um, so I actually got some new poles this year. Um, is, I've never jumped on them, but we, we've gotten new poles, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see how how these poles will, 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 will work for the Olympics. And, um, you know, my hurdles. My hurdles is a big one. I think I think once I once I get my hurdles going, that's a good pole vault video right there. <laughs> um, yeah, once I get these two events clicking and my 1500, you know, I've never been... I never loved the 1500, but I think the 1500 at the World Championships, I had to really dig deep and, and, and run a personal best. So I'm hoping to have that weapon in if I ever need it to... to to run what I need to run to get on the podium. Yeah, Lyndon, um, how, how is your javelin coming along? We know that from a, from a national track and field culture, Grenada is pretty strong with, mm -hmm. with uh, javelin. Um, Paul Phillip, one of the leading coaches there, has prepared a lot of your outstanding javelin throwers, including the current, well, the top-rated and two-time world champion, Anderson Peters. Um, how, much, how, much, how much is your javelin satisfying you at the moment as part of your 10-event program? 
Um, it's, it's actually, so my javelin has always been my weapon. And um, three years ago, I tore my oblique throwing the javelin. And I've never, I never really been, um, I never really gotten back to that. I've, I've, obviously, I'm over 70 meters, but my coaches think I should, I should be throwing further. But um, af after tearing my oblique in the javelin, um, it's something that I've, I've never really found the form that I used to have in the javelin. Um, it's something that we're, we're working on a lot. Um, I'm, get, I'm regaining my confidence in, in, in the javelin and I'm hoping that for some reason when I need a big one, it comes, you know. So I'm hoping that if I need one, a big one at the Olympics, uh, it's going to come. Yeah, uh, the Caribbean doesn't have a long history, um, Lyndon, of, of decathletes. Um, Claston Bernard and um, Maurice Smith, Smith. Mm -hmm. um, two Jamaicans. Your brother, Kurt Felix, also fairly prominent globally as, as decathletes in the past two decades or so. Where did this inspiration come from to become a decathlete? Because as, as Leighton just, just referenced, it is a grueling event. And if, if I'm a teenager... <laughs> having an interest in track and field. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure decathlon would be my choice. It sounds, sounds too much. <laughs> um, I think, I think it's a testament to the culture that's, that's in Grenada right now where every, you know how you want to represent your house and get points for your house. So everybody would do a little bit of all the events like Kirani would throw the javelin, like um, Kirani would long jump and he would still dominate all the, the running events. And I, I um, I was fortunate enough because I always wanted the, the biggest trophy and the person with the biggest trophy, person with the most points always got the biggest trophy. So I would I would dabble in all in all of the events and then um, watching my brother excel in the decathlon, I was just like, it was an easy transition because I was a good thrower, but I, I also had the basic sprinting skills because I would, I would win all the throws and finish like second or third in, in the 100 and 200. So... It was it was a smooth transition, and then so as a younger athlete, seeing my brother get sports scholarship and seeing other athletes excel, I was like, you know, I think that's something that I can, I can, uh, I can explore. I will say this though, I never thought that doing the decathlon would get me this far. I only did it because I wanted a, a, a sports scholarship because it was easy to get a sports scholarship being like a multi-talented athlete, mm -hmm. and um, you know. I always say God has put the right people in my life to just help me get to the point that I'm at right now. I want to ask you something, because you mentioned, you, you mentioned of course, your strength in the sprints. One and the four. Sounds like me in high school. But the 1,500 sprinters and long, middle and long distances don't work very well. G give me a sense of what goes into your 1,500 preparation, because it, it cannot be easy. And it probably is one of the more frustrating parts of your preparation. Give me a sense of how that works for you. Definitely, especially for me, since since I'm a thrower, I need I have a lot of muscle mass. Yeah. So I can't be I can't be like a, a, a lean, skinny guy to run the fifteen hundred. So like like my coach now, he hated the fifteen hundred too. So he understands. Like he has the worst fifteen hundred I've ever seen. So he understands. <laughs> <laughs> he understands the the nature that goes into the into the decathlon 1500 and how to, there's a difference in the way that you train for the decathlon 1500 and for the 1500 you know like the the tempo the miles and stuff obviously i can't put a bunch of miles if i want to run 10 4 in 100 yep and um so i i think i think we're figuring out what works for linden victor uh we do a lot of my my 1500 has a lot to do with my warm up now so i i would my warm up will consist of like a 10 minute jog just to keep building the endurance every single day so like if i if i run 10 minutes every single day for 200 days then that's a lot of miles that's just accumulating over over the time mm -hmm. and then obviously we'll do a tempo work but i think that's one of the ways that we've learned to like trick my body into running 10 minutes so when I ask it to run four minutes hard it's a little bit easier yeah I, I understand that it makes sense uh, Lyndon in Jamaica the the culture here for the high school championship is 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 tremendous and I'm sure I'm sure you've heard you've heard about it but I've, I've always heard that the intercol schools championship in Grenada is really really big and popular yeah. and and uh, can you talk to <laughs> us about, can you talk to us about it 
and your memories of competing in the Grenadier Intercall Schools competition? Man, let me tell you, I, I've, seen, I've seen the boys and girls champs, and I might be biased in this, but Intercall is better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't sure you were going to say that, but I knew you had some good things to say about it. So, so continue. Oh, man. <laughs> like, just, just watching the way that schools competed against each, against each other and the rivalry and the competition, like, you, you're talking about guys that are, like, 50 years old and 60 years old. Like, mm -hmm. when Intercar comes around, they still wear their, their school uniform in so much pride. Yeah. I, I think, like, the whole island is almost, like, it's coming together in a division if that if that makes any sense <laughs> you know yeah I... it, it, it's you know and I, and and it's one of those things where like the competition in the athletes the, the way that the athletes compete for their school pride it's it's almost like the mini olympics because you don't get paid you don't get anything it's just literally for pride yes you know and it, it's it's to me it's the purest form of competition and it's when it's a joy of being an athlete. Like now, as a professional athlete, you got to worry about performing. You got to worry about doing all of this. But like when you're in the intercall and boys and girls champ, it's like it's the purest form of competition because it's just joy. You yeah. know, it's like it's just pure joy. It's pure competing for your school and for and for the tie and for you know for the legacy of the people that have passed on before you because because the guys that passed on before you they left a winning culture. You want to continue with that winning culture so yeah. it's it's amazing well i i think i will i will try to uh, make a pledge that at some point sports max will um try to do some coverage of the grenada intercall because i've heard about it for decades and i've heard about how big and popular it is and how among the entire country that you know yeah. it is it is something that that's really big so i just wanted you to um give an outline to our viewers just how big the Grenada Intercall Schools uh, competition is. Can can you tell me, having said that, about what the building of the national stadium meant for for this meet? Because I think your national stadium was probably built in the late 1990s, and and you hosted Carifta Games shortly after that, probably 2000. But um, compared to the venue that you would have used prior to your national stadium, how much did having a, a brand new national stadium with the Mondo track um, boost the kind of atmosphere and um, appetite for the event? Well, um, first of all, I must give um, kudos to the government to seeing the, the need to have a stadium that will help excel not just track and field, but football. Yes. Um, because I don't know if you guys noticed, Ivan destroyed a... a, a I our remember. stadium completely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah. So for a long time in Grenada, there was no stadium. Mm -hmm. um, so we all, all of all, most of our sports meets was was done on grass and stuff like that. And then, you know, government found the need to really like invest back into having us have a a track that that's usable and accessible for for things like the intercall. And now we're hosting Carifta this year. Yes, you know, and and what whatever comes with hosting Carifta, we're gonna we're gonna benefit from that tremendously. I think the athletes in Grenada are excited, the coaches are excited, the people are excited. Um, I think Grenada is gonna be a great host for 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 the for the Carifta games. I I know for a fact that the whole country is excited for 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 the Carifta and to be able to have the honor to to be able to host the Carifta games. Yeah, well, it's, as usual, going to be the Easter weekend, Linda. Um, uh, Sportsmax will be there with live coverage. Uh, maybe you could make a, a trip to... I know you're busy and training hard and so on, but uh, it would be great to have Linda and Victor at home for the Carifta Games coming up this Easter weekend. And uh, you can um, be, a, be a part of our, our, our coverage and, you know, just um, bring the kind of international flair that you represent to our viewers, to our viewers at the Carifta Games. But we are as you are looking forward to it. And we know Grenada, having hosted the Carifta Games before, will be great hosts as usual. And we're looking forward to that. But Lyndon, thanks for talking to us. We hope your training continues to go well. And uh, we hope that things work well for you in Paris this year. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'll be in Carifta, so we'll see. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's great. I, I wished you would. 
and you will be. Thanks. We'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.